in that regards. There's a fear, though, um, that no matter what, some of these smaller neighborhood schools where kids can walk to school, they're, they're used to having access to the superintendent uh, at a moment's notice or the principal at, at a moment's notice, uh, that these things are going to end, that as part of a K-12 district, some of their neighborhood schools are going to be merged, closed, and they're going to lose that type of personal attention that they're used to in smaller districts in a neighborhood school. Um, how do you address that concern? I mean, I, I, it's probably an assumption, mm -hmm. but there is that assumption that when you become part of a larger district, you're going to lose some personal attention. It, uh, well, I think that the, the, um, that is an issue. That mm -hmm. We would be certainly remiss not to realize that that's out there. But I think that in the end result, what has to occur is that once a study is done, it is, it is our hope that the study will prove that the advantages uh, greatly outweigh mm -hmm. uh, the disadvantages to some type of a merger. Uh, it, you know, it, it's very nice to, to have a neighborhood school uh, that's been in place and in that neighborhood for many, many years. I, I, I know people are comfortable with it. Uh, they're very relaxed and, and feel, as you said, that it's accessible. But uh, on the other side of that, the educational component that is so necessary today to, to uh, prepare our, our youngsters for tomorrow and the world in which they're going to live is going to override some of those things. You know, if, if for instance, uh, let me give you an example. If it's going to, to be, a, if there's going to be a time in our nation when our students become bilingual, then uh, a, a school of uh, 100 students or 200 students are, is going to be missing out if they're not able to finance, financially support a language program. And by merging two schools, uh, mm -hmm. it may well be that for the first time, those students not only get a language uh, K to eight, but get the choice of maybe two languages in their elementary careers. So it, there, there are going to be advantages to to mergers that um, I would hope eventually people would would be able to endorse as opposed to to simply saying um, you know I, I I think I'll go one step further with this if you if you permit me I, I think that more than having access to just the local school and feeling comfortable the underlying writing issue in schools today as it should be is is my child going to be safe so the safety issue of what happens to my child who no longer has this environment but now is going to have this environment is much bigger than I think um, people had anticipated that it would be. Well, there's always resistance to change. I mean, New Jersey's been talking about consolidating school districts for a long time, and there's always going to be um, opposition to change. How do you combat that? And you know, with that, people have neighborhood schools, they have small districts, and when you combine them with larger districts, you know, you're, you're, you're bringing in a host of other issues, mm -hmm. whether they be socioeconomic, whether they be, let's say, what it is, race, um, and you have more diversity, perhaps, in a district than, than people are used to. How do you combat those types of perceptions or those types of fears? Well, first of all, we have to go back to the fact that this is a law. The legislature mm -hmm. passed a law in New Jersey, and unless that law is in some way um, uh, altered or, or rescinded or, or addressed in another way, um, it, is, it is the law that K-8 to districts in New Jersey, within a reasonable time, will no longer and should no longer exist. So we have to, we have to go back to the fact that you know, whether someone is uh, resisting it or not, it's just like any other law that's passed. You know, you resist paying taxes, but you end up paying them because it is the law. And, and I, I, I suspect that within time, um, it's going to be, you know, um, people are going to be encouraged because there are going to be all kinds of other incentives that they're going to be looking at. Um, you know, being able to afford to live in New Jersey is a big factor. And if people do not live in New Jersey or cannot pay taxes in New Jersey, then even these small neighborhood schools that we're presently looking at are not going to be able to survive. Mm -hmm. So it's almost a survival issue that comes into play with, yeah. with these districts as well, 
you know, in terms of how long can uh, the local resident of that district, um, I'll use Deal as an example. Um, Deal is under 100 students, and uh, they only have about 30 students of their own. Others are, are um, tuition. tuition students. Now, if these tuition students next year or the year after no longer go to, uh, to Deal or wish to go to Deal, that's a district that, that, you know, are the residents there really going to endorse paying a, and running and operating an entire school for 30 students? Right. Let, me, let me ask you this. Right now, the law r requires a referendum so that the voters of each district that will be consolidated or merged will have a, a decision to make. Whether in a they, formal mm -hmm. regionalization, in yes. In a formal re regionalization. Um, and yet we have a law requiring the merger of school districts uh, into K-12 districts. What happens when voters, and I think invariably you're going to have this situation now and then, vote down uh, the recommendations of the proposed merger? Then what? As it, the law uh, states right now, that then tells the legislature that um, it's not going to happen, that this is not a merger through a regionalization that's going to take place. Now, that's when, per, on a personal basis, uh, professionally as well, but personally, I see the ball go back to the legislature because it, if, if the legislature passed the law, you now have residents and voters telling you that the process has taken place, we don't want it. I, I can't predict what the legislature will do, but that certainly is a question that has been raised at every forum that we've talked at mm -hmm. and every time we've met with boards and, and others. Now, the, the consolidation law was passed before the economic downturn. Well, that's yeah. one of the things I was going to say. Is yeah. and, and so, so now... We're, we're in a unique situation where people are really struggling and never before had we had the opportunity to consolidate school districts because there wasn't a law in place. Now there, has, now there is this law and going forward we're going to be very careful of how we consolidate the districts because of the economy that's out there people no longer can afford the kinds of taxes. And we all know that the vast majority of your taxes go to the school. So and and there, even if th there's an economic turnaround, do you think this process is um, inevitable? I do in, yeah. in, in, some well, res great. in many respects. Yeah. Uh, other states have looked to this. There are many, there are many uh, states, as you I'm sure know, that already have county systems. They're not, they're not small. Um, local districts like we have in New Jersey. And uh, Maine has just addressed the issue. Pennsylvania did it several years right. ago. So it's, it's, we're not blazing a new trail. So right. Well, you have a very a difficult road ahead and a lot of work before you. But I'd like to thank you both for helping us to address the issue and uh, coming here today. That's all the time we have for this episode. Join us next time for Outlook Monitor. Thank you very much. <laughs>